Hi everyone. Today I'm back with another physics question from Young and Freeman's physics university physics textbook. I have with me here question 2.78. Let's get started. During your summer internship for an aerospace company, you were asked to design a small research rocket. The rocket is to be launched from rest from the Earth's surface and is to reach a maximum height of 960 meters above the Earth's surface. The rocket's engines give the rocket an upward acceleration of 16 meters per second squared during the time T that they fire. After the engines shut off, the rocket is in free fall, ignore air resistance. What must the value of T, what must be the value of T in order for the rocket to reach the required altitude? All right, so let's start off with a diagram as we usually do. And so um, let's say that we have some rocket. Oh, let's draw that again. Okay. So let's say that we have some rocket and it's going to be accelerating upwards at 16 meters per second squared. And ultimately we want it to reach um, this maximum height of 960 meters above the Earth's surface. And this is going to be the Earth's surface right here. Um, just to make this rock a little bit more prominent, I'm just gonna give it this look right here with red. Okay, and so it fires at 16 meters per second squared acceleration for a certain time T until it hits a point, right? So for this time t, it's gonna, it's gonna take time t and its acceleration is gonna be 16 meters per second squared. And then beyond this point, it's going to be in free fall. And what we can do now is let's go ahead and write down our knowns. We can split this problem into, up into two pieces. So we know that this first part right here is going to be um, the, first uh, part of the rocket's journey in the second part when it's in free fall, we'll say that that's our second part. So our givens in our first part, so I'm just gonna kind of highlight this in red. So for our red part of VI, we know that it starts from rest. So VI is equal to zero meters per second. We know that it accelerates at 16 meters per second squared. And we know that the time is equal to T. And we don't know what VF is. And we know that it, it travels a distance we can call H1, right? So let's say that this distance right here is H1. Right, And for this second portion here, which I'm going to be um, um, all kind of highlighting in blue, is going to be the free fall portion. So we know that the VI from here, right, is going to be the VF at this position. So the VF here is going to be the VI in the second part. So I'm just gonna draw that with red We'll write that one, one just to be um, as apparent as we can be. And we know that the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Because it's in free fall. And we know that the, um, the distance it travels, it's, it's going to be um, H2, right? But one thing that we, one piece of information that we can use to make our lives easier is this 960 meters. We know that H1 plus H2, right? H, um, H1 plus H2 is equal to 960. So therefore, for the second part, we can just say that 960 minus H1 is equal to H2, right? So we have an equation right here we can use. And we can plug that in right over here. So um, we could do this, you know, vice versa. However, whatever's, um, whatever we choose, if we want to solve for H1 or H2, 
it's just going to be a slightly different method, but here I'm going to choose to substitute in um, H2, which is 960 minus H1. And we know that our VF is going to be zero meters per second, right? Because we know that whenever we have a projectile motion question at the very top, right before it's going to um, change direction, it's going to deaccelerate to zero meters per second, and then it's going to switch direction and increase speed as um, it falls towards the ground. So, so we know that VF is equal to zero meters per second. And we don't know what T is, right? We don't know. Um, and um, I'm going to argue that that's not really even important, but just for the sake of writing down all of our knowns and unknowns, um, here we have it. Okay, so now what we can do is recognize that we have um, our four um, variables right here with um, some knowns, some unknowns, and we have um, kind of the same four right here with knowns and unknowns. So what we can do is we can, um, we can go ahead and uh, write, um, create, and uh, create two sets of equations, right? So let's start off with the red equation. Let's see what, what equation we can use. And we know that it's gonna be from the five kinematic equations. And the ones that contain all these variables are VF squared, um, is equal to V uh, I squared plus two A D. And if I plug in the values that I have here, we know that V I is gonna be zero is equal to two A D is equal to two times 16 times um, a distance of H one. And for the second portion, I'm gonna write it in blue. And we have the same um, variables, vf squared is equal to vi squared plus two ad. And if we plug that in, we have zero, right? Because this is gonna be zero, is equal to vi squared, which is vf one squared um, plus two AD. And if I plug in my numbers, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna plug in my numbers, two AD. Forgot to actually plug in the numbers. So two times negative 9.8 uh, times this D, which is Oh, I'm, I'm actually just going to erase this and write this down on the next line just so that it's a little bit easier for us to see. So it's zero is equal to um, VF one squared plus two times negative 9.8 times 960 minus H1. And now something really interesting we can notice here is that we have two equations, two unknowns, right? So what we can do is um, we can either use substitution or we can use elimination. In this scenario, I'm going to see that because VF, uh, VF1 squared is right over here, I'm just going to use substitution. So I'm just going to substitute this red value in right here. So we have 0 is equal to 2 times 16 H1 plus... 2 times negative 9.8, 960 minus H1, right? And I'm going to simplify this equation, but before I go ahead and do that, I'm just going to erase um, some of this board so that it's easier to continue. Um, okay, so it's easier to continue. I'm actually gonna go ahead and erase this as well, unfortunately. because we already have what we need. And now I am, uh, yeah, I'm gonna simplify this. So I'm gonna pull out my calculator. 
just gonna write that in black or yeah, black font. So we have zero is equal to 32 H1 minus 9.8 times two, which is giving me 19.6, uh, 960 minus H1 and simplify again. And now I'm getting 32 H1 minus uh, 18, 816 plus 19.6 H1, 51.6 H1 minus 18.816. And when I plug this into my calculator, I'm getting that H1 is equal to 364.65. Meters. So we have our H1 value. Right here. Oh, I don't like that. Um, sorry. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay. And now what we can do is plug that in right here to, uh, so, or sorry, we can recognize that we have VI, right? We have A, we have D now too, because we have H1. And now we can just solve for T. So again, if we go back to our five kinetic equations, which one of them has these four variables? And I'm just gonna erase this and write that down, or actually, sorry, I have space right here. Um, in this corner up here. So I'm just gonna write a little bit smaller, but we have, um, or I'm also gonna write down our given 364.65 meters right there. Okay. And the equation that I'm getting that has these four uh, variables is D is equal to VI T plus half of AT squared. And if I plug in all my values, um, we know that VI is zero, right? Just from here, um, I'm getting D is equal to half of A T squared, 364.65 is equal to half of 16 times T squared. And the T value I'm getting, just gonna plug this into my calculator one more time to double check my work. And I'm getting the time is equal to 6.75 seconds. And there we have it. This T, or sorry, I should write this as capital T, this capital T value uh, for the time that it takes the rocket to go from zero to this final velocity in which it can start falling in free fall to ultimately reach this 960 second, 960 meters the time it takes for it to have to accelerate at um, 16 meters per second squared is 6.75 seconds. And that's our solution. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. Thank you so much. See you next time.